Hi there, Lisa Camarillo here with Bill Long Toyota in Trinidad, Colorado. We're talking today about de-stressing or identifying your stress. For Stress Awareness Day, what would I have learned is most people have no awareness that they're even under any kind of physical heightened or mental stress. So today we're going to give you a couple of techniques that you can actually de-stress in a minute or less, right from your desk. You don't even have to get up. However, one of our key things is just identifying when am I actually feeling stressed. Most of the time we are feeling so much stress and it's from outside stressors, that's what I like to call them, like your computer or your phone or even your glasses. And we're feeling these fatigued items that are coming up and we don't realize that those are the things that are actually causing the stress. So. Today I want to start out with probably our most um, aware, you know, is comes right in here into your shoulders and into your neck. Comes from, I don't know, this posture, from typing or reaching. And a lot of times, like for me, I have my desk at this corner angle. And a lot of people are working from a corner or even if you're working in front. But if you're like myself and you're working at an angle, then you're probably reaching slightly. And if you see, just in my posture, my reach slightly, it's causing a slight pull in my lower back. It's also causing me to have to engage my core in order to stay sitting up straight. Therefore, if I'm not consciously aware of that, what do I do? I don't engage and I reach. Now, my lower back has all the pressure and I begin to ache, right? Then this is going to reach all the way up, all the way up the spine and it's going to start to grab into the shoulders for support. So what happens in the back is the, the body doesn't know. All it's doing is it's reaching. It's, it's like you can, your, your body. So if I don't engage my core and I reach like this, then my posture looks really kind of at a curve. But what's happening in my back is my back is reaching. It's reaching to hold on to something. And so what we're going to do today is we're going to just take one minute and we're going to learn how to breathe. Now, just for a second, I want you to just take some breath. Now, to breathe in through the nose, hold it for a moment, and then exhale through your mouth. Now, I want you to take a breath, we're going to take three breaths, and I want you to place your palm wherever on your body that you feel the breath is going into. Most of you are going to reside very high here, but wherever it is, there's not a wrong answer. It's just place your palm wherever the breath is. So if you're breathing in, as you can feel it traveling, And breathe in again. If you feel it getting a little lower, and move. Now, on the third breath, I want everybody to place both palms on the lower part of your abdomen. And I want you to focus in on pulling the breath that low, pushing out the belly. And then pulling in the belly on the exhale. If in the beginning your breath was residing here, it's because this is your flight or flight. <laughs> the breath that can't go anywhere, it's like, <gasps> it's, it's like, um, it's reaching for breath. So you're probably not even getting a full intake of any kind of oxygen. The next thing is, is if you do drink enough water. So when we're not getting enough oxygen, the very perfect thing to do is to take some water. You want to take about six drinks of water, and in between that, you take some breaths. Now you're going to oxygenate your body, and you're going to hydrate your body. And these are both very important things that you don't even need to do anything. You don't need to bring stuff from home, just water and air. And we provide both of those at work. Isn't that nice? So, okay, back to this. You're sitting at your desk, and you're going to spread your legs a little bit more than hips distance, which is two fists between the feet. 
Then we're going to take it just slightly more, so you're going to be a little bit more than hips distance. And then you're going to push the feet outward. This is going to open your gate of your hips and allow everything to fall into place as we go into our slight inversion. We're going to take a deep breath and sit up nice and tall. And then you're going to exhale it out. Now, we're going to push our seat back and we're going to rest our arms, preferably at the elbow if you can. But I want you to take a look here. I'm really kind of distancing, but I'm doing it from my torso. But I'm resting my arms at the elbow at the desk. Now I'm going to take a deep breath. And as I exhale, I'm going to drop my head between my arms gently and exhale. Now I'm going to continue with some breath. So you're going to deep breath, hold and expand it, and then exhale. You might be feeling some pain and, and pressure in your arms. You can choose to come down a little bit to where it hangs a little bit to relieve that, but what you're really trying to achieve is to control some of that um, anxious pressure is what I'm going to call it through your breath. Now, in some cases, you can actually bring the palms together, and that'll help you come into this a little bit deeper. You're going to take a total of 10 breaths, inhaling and slow exhaling. Now, in this posture, I'm becoming more effective because I let the elbows off the table and I brought the hands together. Now, as I'm done with my 10 breaths, I'm going to sit up and I feel the tension and the pressure. It released completely all the way from my ears, all the way down into my shoulders and into the shoulder blade. I feel pretty relaxed right now. And I must admit I wasn't all that stressed, but when I practice it at the, around that three o'clock hour in the day, which is usually a time most of us get up and we think, I need a cup of coffee, um, <laughs> I need to go make some tea, I need to do something. Well, what I started doing was instead of adding more stressor to my day by, by um, stimulating myself with caffeine, what I started doing was making sure I did the six drinks of water and the breath and these stretches. And then I found that more oxygen got to my brain, the more energy that I actually had. And I wasn't stressed. So my shoulders are feeling pretty good. But you might say, yeah, but Lisa, you know what? My lower back is what really kills me. Well, it's because we sit in this chair. And notice how I'm not sitting all the way back. Because if we were sitting all the way back and supported, well, then life would be pretty good. However, if you are like me or most people, you're sitting at the edge because you've got to reach, you've got to answer the phone, you're doing whatever you're doing, and you're try, you're, you are now having to figure out how to support your own lower back. So what we're going to do next is we're going to just do a hip opening stretch. And this is going to relieve the sciatic and your hips. So we're going to place both feet on the ground, hips distance apart with these knees. We're going to start by taking our right foot up onto the knee. Now, you're not bringing it in, so don't worry. You're just bringing it to the edge. And if this is difficult for you because of your, you know, any kind of injury or your body style, just do your very best, okay? Because what we're really trying to do is open. If you can't lift your leg onto your knee, just cross it over, okay? Because it's, it, it, Sometimes we, you can't get to the postures that you want to right away, but there's always a way to modify and then you eventually find yourself getting there. You've paralleled the shin and you're leaving a triangle opening between the legs. You're going to take a deep breath and with our right hand, we're going to press on to this knee and deep breath, inhale, expanding and extending up. 
Then we're going to hinge from the hips and maintain in a straight spine as we lean forward on the exhale. Now it might be just right here. You might go like an inch and go, holy cow, my gosh, whatever you say. And you might be somebody that's so flexible and then you come down. It is of my experience that the most of us that are working in this environment, this is where we are. You can come down as you breathe and put more weight or just open, but just focus in on the breath again, inhaling through the nose, full releasing exhales through the mouth. By isolating and hinging, what we're doing here is we are actually opening up the hip, but we are triggering the sciatic. So we're gonna take the breaths, and we're only gonna do like five on each side. That's it. So inhale, hold the breath, let it expand in the body, exhale through the mouth. If while you're inhaling and you're holding that breath, you can imagine the pain or pressure that you are releasing and grab it with your breath internally and then push it out through your mouth. Two more. I notice when I get to about that fourth breath, I can really feel myself grabbing that tension more and I'm able to really fall deeper in to the stretch. And release, that's it. Now, you can take your leg down or if you don't wanna release the leg completely yet, we're gonna do a slight turn. On this slight turn, we're going to inhale again. Right hand is going to grab the side of the chair. The left hand is going to grab the knee. And exhale as you twist, gently. The better you get at this, the more you can relax your belly and twist and look behind you. If this is your first time, it might just be right here today, and that's just uh, that's just fine because it's about creating that it's about creating that um, that twist and that bind and release. Remove your leg and kind of just feel that for me, this right side of the body feels very mobile, and this left side actually feels very lethargic and stagnant, like. It needs to catch up, okay, and it's a little bit different. So we're going to do that left side because there's always two sides. Don't ever give one side without giving the other because you want to create that balance. So inhale and exhale, bring it down. And remember, you don't push yourself. There's no competition here. We're not doing posture competition. All right, so inhale and exhale. So you're going to have your five breaths and you're going to then bring it up, inhale and twist. This is always a great twist. You might get a lower back uh, adjustment, but if you can relax at your hip here, you might even let your hip release and bring it back. Okay, so we never even got up from our chair. We stretched and we released the upper part of our body and we just released our hips and lower back. My lower back doesn't feel any pressure at all right now. But there's still the side effects of the typing. So we're going to just lean on our desk and this is always a, a great way to do this. So I'll do it on this side just to kind of show you. We're going to just lean the whole forearm onto the desk and flatten down. We're going to then, my left hand is going to lift the right fingers toward me. The entire bottom part of my forearm is on the desk resting and this is loose, okay? So I'm just relaxing. I can do this while having a conversation, while being in a meeting, um, while listening to a tutorial or on a Zoom meeting, it really doesn't matter what you're doing, you could be doing this. You're gonna be taking deep breaths again, inhaling 
and pushing out, exhale. You only will need to take about three or four of these, then you're going to take it down. Now, go to your elbow and then just come slightly up and over. There's a trigger point here. This trigger point is why, why everybody feels like they need surgery for carpal tunnel, when really they just need this. So you can trigger point here, but what I like to do is I like to put my elbow into it, breathe and exhale as I pressure release that point. Then, with my arm, I'm pushing the blood towards the wrist. If that is not available to you, you can't reach over like that. Let's say that that's an occurrence that's happening. You can get anything, you can even get your mouse, you can actually, let me use an a item that you would have on your desk, you can actually get a stapler, um, anything that's going to be able to reach over, grab it, and push that blood flow down towards the wrist. You can use your tape dispenser, you can use your finger, but you're not going to have enough strength in your hand to really do it. You want to do this at least five times, and then you want to lift your hand up, you want to get that elbow over the heart, and then begin to do some, just pulling your hands in and out, in and out, maybe just a few times. And then of course, you want to again do it on the other side. So those are your tips to stretch out at your desk. I hope that helped you as much as it has helped me and all of my staff. Have a great day and namaste.